Greetings, my wonderful jelly beans, and welcome to a very strange episode of Monday Madness, really embracing the whole mischief theme of the month. So, what is this video today going to be about? Well, I asked my Patreons to vote, and they decided whether I was going to do a story time episode, whether I was going to do a Peter Pan themed episode, and it was pretty much a 50 50 between the two of them. And seeing as the brand new Disney Peter Pan Wendy movie is coming out next week. I have hopes, they're not high, but I have some. I am going to save the Peter Pan content for next week's episode of Monday Madness because that should be when I will be able to review it, having hopefully seen it at the time. And so today I'm going to be doing a story time episode. This means, of course, I'm going to be creating a story using the mischief and the chaos that is in my brain, and I'm going to be creating a story off the cuff because I have not thought about this before because I have been very busy with many different projects this last couple of weeks. So! What am I going to use to create this story today out of the ultimate mischief for the final week of mischief, the month of April? Well... It was here that my camera decided to cut out, so here is Editing Morku here to tell you that Hi, this video is a musical episode where I'm creating an entire musical based on the songs from one band and one album. And again, this is completely improvised because I had no time to prepare for this video. So the band in question is a band called The Used, which people have probably heard of, I'm not sure. Have you heard of them? Let me know down in the comments below. If not, I am introducing you to them now. And the album I'm going to be using is my favourite album called in Love and Death. Now, I will admit that the main reason I picked up this album at the time was because of the artwork. I just thought it looked really cool. I love that style and I love the style on the back. So that was why I picked this up. But to be fair, several years later, I picked up an album by a band called In This Moment, purely based on the album cover, and they became one of my new favorite bands. So hey, judging a book by its cover sometimes can work, guys. And it's gorgeous. I love this sort of gothic, dark style of art, and you even have the lyrics put in with it, you know? Look at this one for Cut Up Angels. I drew this a lot in the back of my books in school. So I'm gonna be working through this album to create a musical story using the songs to be the songs in the musical and create the narrative. I still don't know what's gonna happen, so we'll find out. The one thing I'm going to give myself as an extra challenge is I am not allowed to rearrange the order of these songs. For one thing, the band put them in this order for a reason when they put out the CD, but also I think it's extra challenging. So I don't get to pick and choose where certain songs go to fit a narrative I have in my head. Nope, I've just got to go with this song, then this song, then this song, and that will completely change the course of the story. All right then, my wonderful jelly spoons, here we go. Creating a musical, a theatrical experience, a story being told through the songs of the used in love and death. I don't have to get my phone out to Google the lyrics because they're right here. Hey buddy, the dog wants to say hi. Come here buddy, come here, come and say hi. Say hello. There you are, say hello. Oh. Before we do the story itself, I'm gonna have a real quick sort of dive into how I think this musical might look. So based on the art in this album alone, very theatrical, very abstract, lots of weird colours and shapes and things. I don't think it's set completely in the real world. Maybe there's a lot about imagination and hallucinations and nightmares. It's definitely an album about sort of like your darkest thoughts and things like that. I don't necessarily want to go completely tropey and set it in a mental asylum, but at the same time that might work. So I am going to be open to that potentially later on. I'll see how the plot develops. Dreams and weird coloured lighting and different ways of moving the set and the staging around so that you have people maybe sitting on the walls having perfectly normal conversations and upside down things happening and the world rotates. Even more natural shapes like trees and things, the branches will be all like twisted and weird and with jagged edges and things like that. In terms of costuming, again lots of abstract and strange, dark colours perhaps underneath but then having splashes of colours and stripes or jagged things, almost like slabs ashes and claw marks across different characters' costumes, even if it's so much that you can't see the black underneath and it's got sort of, you know, white and neon blue and greens and stuff. Sort of ways of building up on a character, lots of different layers of things, so even if they do seem more colourful, there is still that black underneath. I also think because they use this in one of their music videos, I want to use UV lighting. So at some points during the show there'll be UV lights and different characters will have maybe UV bits in their hair or maybe their wigs go a specific colour when it goes UV. They could also have maybe something in their makeup and a touch on their costume as well, whether it's a shape like an eye or a symbol and it's, you know, dotted all over the place, or some of the lines and scratches and artwork, maybe that goes neon colours as well. So something happens when the UV lights come on, but I haven't quite decided yet. So in general, it's warpy, weird, imagination-y, and the costumes look a bit like they're out of 
Mad Max meets The Tribe meets a goth shop meets we just went paintballing and got covered in paint. All right, let's do this story. Let's go. So the first song on the album is called Take It Away. I'm lying to myself and this dag is my excuse. I'm a pawn, I should have paid up and I left an hour late, I was laid up. I must abuse myself, I'm against all this I have made up. Set in stone, the sun will come and I hate the light, you know, I hate the light. To me it looks so pretty burning, I must have caught something in the heat of all those dances. I'm a worm with no more chances and I've lost all doubt in the chemical romance. I can't stop itching over thoughts of tarnished hope. Kind of funny, lonely feeling. I'm not in love, you know it's not love. To me it looks so pretty burning. Burn the sun, burn the light. Take my hand, take my life, take it away. Brothers and sisters, I'm right here with you because everyone's got one. A story to kill me. I'm so apathetic in my resentment. Living, loving, knowing not. Take my hand, take my life. So we're gonna get literal at this point. The first character who comes onto the stage is going to have a dagger. So I'm lying to myself and this dagger is my excuse. You know what? Maybe the first character dies in the first song. Yeah. I mean, if we're going insane asylum, it doesn't have to be an actual dagger. It could be a sort of rough shiv that they've managed to make out of something. We could even have a moment with the overture where we're setting the scene and we have some dialogue between the characters where we're setting up that this is. I think I'm gonna lean into Insane Asylum. Screw it, I'm doing it, I'm leaning into my own trope. All right, it's gonna be set in Insane Asylum. And while we're setting all of this up at the beginning, we'll have this sort of weird overture music and it'll look all interesting and strange and maybe some warping colors and things. And we'll have some dialogue between some nurses, some patients, setting up some of the characters and things and the interactions there. And then this character will come on. Maybe they'll burst through a window maybe they'll smash something. I do like the idea of their first interaction with the audience being, hey, hey, through a window. And now I have a decision to make because I cannot decide whether this character, who is probably about to off themselves, is completely off their medication and going loopy because they're not on their medication that could help them, or they are on their medication and that's what's making it worse. Both of those are tropes, the whole, oh, the institution isn't really helping you, or the institution is trying to help you, but everyone thinks that they're not. So either is a trope. So I'm not gonna pick that yet. I will decide that later on. But I do think I would like all of the doctors and the nurses and the people working in this asylum, I want them to be trying to chase down this character and they are saying they're off their medication. They are off the meds, get them, get them, get them. So whether or not that ends up being true later, that is what they are saying to get people to come and catch this character. However, the character bursts through a window and I think this is where they'll end up being by themselves. Perhaps the window is to a separate room that people can't get into because it's locked. Maybe it's an operating room or something like that. And they have this big piece of glass from the window and they're rambling to themselves. Maybe they were rambling as they first came on and they smashed things out of the way. And as they jump through this window to get into this place and be by themselves. They, and they are now surrounded by doctors and nurses, maybe some other patients too. And they're all like at these windows and they're trying to get in but they can't and the doors are locked and they are in this room rambling, rambling, rambling and eventually the rambling turns into this song, Take It Away. So that first line, I'm lying to myself and this dagger is my excuse. The dagger is obviously just a piece of glass but in their head it's this dagger that they're about to drive into themselves and we as the audience probably know that that's what's about to happen and this character is seeming to say that they are lying to themselves about how it's gonna be fine and happy and it's not gonna hurt and it's gonna be the end, but then they'll switch back and they'll start talking about something that's happened in the past, which is the next line. I'm a pawn, I should have paid up, I left an hour late. Maybe something happened, maybe they were in debt to someone and they had to go and pay this character money and something happened to either them or their family or someone they loved and something happened because they didn't do this. So that's a hint of something that happened in their past. But then they're back in with the next line. I must abuse myself and I'm against all that I've made up. Again, that's another piece of their psyche. It's not from the past, it's not from the present, it's just another piece that's coming out and coming through. And then we have the set in stone, the sun will come and I hate light, you know I hate the light. What can potentially happen at this point is the characters outside of this room that they have ended up in, perhaps it is the operating room, and the characters outside, the doctors, they're managing to like flash the lights and turn the lights on, and this big beam of floodlight comes on, which would usually be on while they're operating, but they know this character can't do the light because it makes their brain go fuzzy and they can't deal with it, so they're turning these lights on. So maybe that part of the song is screamed as opposed to sung, so it's, you know, I hate the light, I hate the light! And that's a moment of, again, their current predicament and who they currently are versus the person they were in the past and all these other pieces of them that recognize all the trouble that they've broken into. And then we carry on. To me, it looks so pretty burning. Now this could get really dark. Potentially while they are carrying, covering their eyes from this light, which is hurting their brain and hurting their eyes, the shiv, the piece of glass that they've got, could catch them on one of their arms. And they look at themselves and they think that it's a burn mark. They think that when 
they covered their eyes, their arm got burned from these lights. And it's just another part of their brain that isn't quite registering things properly. So they are bleeding, but this character is saying, huh, to me it looks so pretty burning. And that's again telling the audience that they're, they're not okay and they need help, but this is probably not the way to be going about it. And then we have the line, I must have caught something in the heat of all those dances. Now in this case, I think dances should mean fighting and running away. So while they're saying this, people are maybe reaching, trying to reach through the window where they've jumped through to get to them. And they are sort of running all over the place and they're looking at this bleeding. And again, it looks to them like it's burning. And maybe they're saying, I must have caught something in the heat from all these dances. And the dancing is them running around and trying to get away from everybody. And then it says, I'm a worm with no more chances. And this again can be screamed potentially at the other inmates. Maybe some of them seem to be their friend and they're trying to help them, trying to encourage them to put the knife down while well, the piece of glass, they're trying to tell them, put it down, put it down, you'll be okay, you'll be okay. And this person is sort of scream singing back at them, I'm a worm, no more chances. Like this is it, this is, this is happening. And then we have the line of, I've lost all doubt in a chemical romance. Now, while I love the reference to the My Chemical Romance band, I also think that this could be a reference in this story to all the drugs that they are on. Whether they are currently on them or not, whether they have been taking them and that's what's made them worse or not taking them deliberately and that's what's made them worse, whatever it is, they feel like these doctors have just given them too many things and their brain is all over the place and it's made it worse and worse and worse. They've lost it. They've lost it. They're in this chemical romance and it's all going wrong. And maybe part of this character's costume is red that the audience don't see until the lights dim and flash and in the UV lights, it looks as if the blood has been bleeding all the way down their side, but actually it's just an effect because of the neon lighting. And then they go back to the, it looks so pretty burning, it looks so pretty burning. And at this point it's just red and there's red all over their costume and things. So they are bleeding, they are burning and that's getting worse and worse and worse as we get to the end of the song. Burn the sun, burn the light. So they're saying almost turn the lights off, but destroy the light, you know, get rid of the sun, get rid of the sun and it hurts and it hurts. And brothers and sisters, are I'm right here with you and that's to their friends and they're trying to say I'm here with you but you've got to do this I've got to get out I've got to get out I've got to get out and then the final line take my hand take my life and the lights will flash as this character brings this shard of glass up to probably the throat because I feel like on the stage that'll be a bigger gesture to show to the audience and because we have at this point the UV light hidden within the black light so when it goes black it also goes UV this particular character will have an as of yet unseen so maybe the actor had to sort of rip a little bit of the costume open to show this but as they go, they have a big UV patch of red and it shows right there as they go, the lights flash and it goes and then the song ends, this character drops and everyone runs in and that's the end of that. Yeah, it's off to a cheerful start. I probably should have done my usual, I don't promise you a happy ending. The next song is called I Caught Fire. And I'm sort of changing my mind. Maybe I'll make this into a no main character story. Maybe every song will be for a different character and it'll show what happens to them in this story. But let's read on with the lyrics and find out. Seem to stop my breath, my hand on your chest, waiting to cave in from the bottom of my hear your voice again. We could dim the sun and wonder where we've been. Maybe you and me. So kiss me like you did. My heart stopped beating, such a softer sin. I'm melting never caught my breath every second i'm without you i'm a mess even know each other trust these words of stone why cuts aren't healing beginning how to love i'm melting in your eyes i've lost my place could stay a while and i'm melting in your eyes like my first time that i caught fire just stay with me lay with me you can stay and watch me fall and of course i'll ask for help we could take our heads off stay in bed just make love that's all this feels like it might be a duet between two horrendously troubled people. I don't care what gender they are, so it can be guys, girls, non-binary, anywhere in between. I don't care, but they are going to be a couple because they talk about being in bed with each other. Maybe there's another part to why this institution is so bad here because the characters who are in this asylum can wear whatever clothes they want and they can almost do whatever they want. They're just being given all these weird drugs and stuff. So these two characters can sleep together or at least believe that they're sleeping together. Ooh, maybe that's a thing for later. I caught fire. So I caught fire could be a reoccurring theme. So this idea of like burn the light and fire and catching fire and it looks pretty burning. This all means something different to different characters. So the first character who sang Take It Away, their burning was the bright lights because they got so many examinations and these lights shine onto them and they can't do the bright lights. These characters 
catching fire means taking these drugs that the doctors are giving them and sort of surrendering yourself and your sanity with these drugs that sort of mellow you out and try to make you better whether or not they are doing we'll find that out later i'm leaning towards no but these characters see it as both a surrender and also peace so when you first catch fire it's terrifying because you've been given these drugs and you're not you anymore and you're sort of floating around and you don't really have your personality or you do you're like trapped inside but you can't express it but also you are free from all of those worries and niggling doubts and all those insecurities and things that haunt you they're sort of still there but they're almost covered in cotton wool the more you surrender to that feeling and just the sort of blissed out ignorance the more you lose yourself so they comfort each other through the catching fire and this song is them singing about how they love each other and they will remind each other of who they really are while they still have to take these drugs every day so you've got things like my head on your chest waiting to cave in from the bottom of my but before they can finish they go on to the next line which is hear your voice again could we dim the sun i don't want this to be characters who are interrupting each other i want this to be characters who are unintentionally losing their train of thought can relate because the drugs you can see them affecting them it's from the bottom of my and maybe we'll even pause the music at that point so we're not playing the song in its entirety and there'll be sort of a moment where they're both just sort of looking at each other and it's almost like unrecognition because these drugs are taking effect and then it snaps back in again and they continue with the song so a very mixed up and jumbled song between these two characters but it does end with them saying just stay with me lay with me just stay with me just stay with me and it's them saying it to each other stay with me but also stay with me, stay with my personality, you know, don't lose me. If you stay with me and I stay with you, then we can give you and me back to each other. And if we both remember each other, even if we can't remember ourselves, then we can rebuild. The next song is called Let It Bleed. This poisons my intoxication. I broke the needle off in my skin, picked the scab and picked the bleeding and assumed that it was all in vain. A positive scab that's never healing, calloused hit me in the face, burning bridge that's so misleading, poisons more potent now with the flame. The fire department couldn't drown the city. They didn't even try to wash it clean. And what, did you think that I was sober? Put me out cause I'm on fucking fire. A positive scab that's never healing, regret that i kept this clean the most that i can do for you is keep on lying it's not a lie if you can let it sing let it bleed and take the red for what it's worth watch the fire mama fill your lungs with smoke for the last time if you feel like dying you might want to sing the use of the word mama makes me immediately go this is a family so this song is being sung to family members from somebody who is inside this asylum and this is someone who is essentially saying to their family and maybe it's in subtext maybe the family isn't picking up on this I'm gonna lie to you because it makes you feel better, but it's not true. And so they're visiting them, maybe it's definitely a mom, maybe a dad, maybe some brothers, sisters, that kind of thing, friends, and they are visiting, it's visiting time, and this character is trying to pull their heart out, but not being heard, whether it's intentional or not. And so this song is all about just, I could tell you anything right now and you're not gonna listen to me, you, you can't hear me. I like the idea of it being a very sincere song, so this character is pouring their heart out, but in those moments where they just, again, realise they're not hearing me, they're not listening to me, then they just start going into the craziness. So they start with, the poison's my intoxication, I broke the needle off in my skin, picked the scab and picked the bleeding and assumed that it was all in vain. So they're saying this to their family, they're midway through a visit and they're saying this, maybe they're trying once again to get through but they've repeated it a lot and the family are just not hearing them. All they're hearing is this character use drugs at one point, not the reasons why, not what was happening to them, that kind of thing. And this thought just drives them to distraction and they jump up and the next line that they sing is the fire department couldn't even drown the city and this isn't actually a line that means anything this is just the characters sort of expressing their frustration in that i can say anything right now and you just think i'm crazy so i'm just gonna say the craziest thing fire department couldn't drown the city and then they couldn't even try to wash it clean and then the moment that is the saddest of all is them singing to their family what did you think that i was sober and this is not true because this is a very sober character and the audience can see this, but the family believes so wholeheartedly that they are not. They're not even visiting them out of real hope at this point. They're visiting out of sort of obligation and to check in on them. And so this character just goes with it. What? Did you think that I was sober? And they know that it's not true, but they know that the family will never believe them anyway. It really brings them back down to a sobering note where they carry on with the next bit where they say, 
the most that I can do for you is keep on lying. And so they do. They just let their family believe that they're insane because nothing they can do is going to change their mind. They're wanting this fire department to put out the fire, the fire that their family is... Oh god, we're talking about fire again! Ah, oh, so, so to this character, fire and burning means their family and all these misconceptions and feelings that they've got about this character's life and their story. This is a reoccurring theme. And the last line that this character says is, if you feel like dying, you might want to sing. And that's said to everyone. Everyone hears this, so it's said to the audience, it's said to their friends in the asylum, it's said to their family. Maybe they're getting pulled away, maybe the time is over, maybe because they've acted out and they've done all this stuff, the family is getting up and they're leaving. And also maybe the sort of nurses and the guard people are coming over and they're dragging them back to take them away. And so the last thing they're saying is just, if you feel like dying, you might want to sing. And that explains the song that they have just sung. God, we might find a happy character at some point, might we? The next song is called All That I've Got. So deep that I didn't even bleed and caught me off guard, red handed. Now I'm far from lonely. Asleep, I still see you lying next to me. So deep that I didn't even bleed. Catch me. I need something else. Would someone please just give me, hit me, knock me out, let me go back to sleep. I can laugh all I want inside, I'm still empty. So deep that I didn't even bleed, catch me. I guess I remember every glance you shot me. Unharmed, I'm losing weight and some body heat. I squoze so hard that I stopped your heart from beating. So deep that I didn't even scream. Fuck me, I'll be just fine, pretending I'm not. I'm far from lonely and it's all that I've got. This is the innocent girl in the cell block tango kind of character. This is the innocent butterfly in a world of webs kind of character. Maybe they can be a young person, maybe this is almost a child, not complete child child, maybe it's, you know, a sort of very young person, early teens maybe, and they have been thrown into this asylum because people believe that they killed their sibling, but they didn't. Ooh. That's horrible and I like it. So maybe they've just arrived then. Maybe something has happened. Maybe there's even journalists outside and they're shouting and there's headlines and stuff. And those can be shown in the crazy moving sets and pieces. You know, when you switch to another character's point of view, you can see different things related to them. And to this character, there'd be a lot of newspaper headlines and articles and TV things and bits of news all over the place, sort of scattered and ripped up all over their brain with all these headlines showing, you know, sibling murder, sibling, that kind of thing. And all these details so the audience can get that as this character is brought into the asylum for the first time. Yeah, I like that because then they're extra small because this is a new place and it's scary. They have no friends here yet. They don't know what's going on. They are terrified and they didn't kill this person. But also within that, their brain has definitely changed a gear. Something has happened to them. They've broken a little bit because they either presumably saw someone murder their sibling or awoke perhaps to find their sibling, you know, wide eyed and dead staring at them. Maybe that's what they mean. Asleep, I still see you lying next to me. And so as they come in, they've got these reporters, maybe they're shouting, and they're shouting all these things at them like, you do it, told you why you did it, you did it. And that's all this cool stuff that they're hearing. And that's why the first line is, so deep that I didn't even bleed. And it's almost to say, you can't hurt me with your words because I'm innocent. Maybe we even have the ghost of the sibling who comes in with them. Ooh, that could be interesting. And they could be in part of the UV light, they could be in a UV outfit, lots of blood from different places if they've been killed, that kind of thing. I like that. So they're far from lonely because they've got the ghost, but that's now all they've got because they've lost everything else. And perhaps their song is split into a few sections. So they start singing it when they first arrive and then we have some dialogue and some scenes and we learn some more about them. Perhaps we see them going to sleep on their first night and their song starts again. So other things could have happened in the meantime. And perhaps that line is different. So it's not saying I can laugh all I want, inside I'm still empty. Perhaps instead what they're saying is, I can laugh all I want inside, I am still empty. So inside, perhaps while they're asleep and they have these memories of their sibling, they can laugh. So inside, in the privateness, they can laugh with their sibling and it's almost the memory of laughing, but they're still empty. So that's what they're saying there. And then perhaps they relive the memory of finding this sibling and they're singing the I squoze so hard I stopped your heart from beating. And rather than that being a sort of Lenny of Mice and Men moment, I really don't want this character to have actually killed somebody. It can be a moment of I found you dead and I just I just kept holding you, I kept holding you and your heart wasn't beating. I, 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 I held you 
and it almost means until the blood stopped pouring. So that's probably what they mean because it was pulsing out of them, but they were already dead. And then the last line is, I'll be just fine pretending I'm not. I'm far from lonely and that's all that I've got. And that's talking about how they are now in this asylum. And that's the pretense because everyone thinks that they're not fine and that they did this horrible thing. So the world is pretending, I'll be just fine. You're all pretending that I'm not, but I'm far from lonely and it's all that I've got. And all that they've got is this ghost who will probably then reappear to them while they are singing this last bit of the song. And so now they have this ghost while they are awake as well as while they're asleep. So that ghost is their fire. Their fire is the ghost, the burning, the light that they see when they close their eyes. That's this character's fire. The next song, song number five, is called Cut Up Angels. And this is the one with the really cool art. I mean, it's all cool art, but this is the one I really like drawing. If we cut out the bad, well then we'll have nothing left. Like I cut up your mouth the night I stuffed it all in and you lied to the angels that I stabbed you to death. If we go at the same time, they'll clean up the mess. I watched you bite into the bottle, watched me kick out the chair, let you chew up the glass and laughed as you just hung there. I have thought of rose petals, mostly perfect and pure. I thought of your petals and the abuse I've been through. I lost my head. You couldn't come. This loss to my brain almost feels like a gun. You lost your head and I couldn't come. This loss to my brain almost feels like a... I told the angels, can't stay in heaven. I asked the devil. So this song is definitely from a character who, in complete contrast to the previous one, this character has done something horrible. And what they're saying is, if you cut out the bad, aka the bad people in the world or the badness in me, well then you'd have nothing left. Saying that everyone has badness in them, everyone is capable of doing the things that I did, everyone can snap, everyone thinks like this. And whether or not you believe that is true, this character does. And they go on to describe a jumbled mix of things that they did, or that they believe that they did, to somebody. And the thing with this character may be they handed themselves in for doing something awful, but perhaps the twist for this character is no one ever found the body. And that's why this character is in this asylum as opposed to in prison, because they came, maybe they handed themselves into the cops because they know that they're a bad person and they embrace it, but not in a like, they're proud of it, woohoo way, but in an I'm bad, everyone's bad shit kind of way. So this character handed themselves into the cops and again we'll learn this through bits of dialogue and scenes before and after this but also through different things that are flashing when we switch to their point of view and their headspace when we see all the different things that are going on on the sets and this character claims to the police that they sliced this person's mouth open with a bottle and they stabbed them, they smashed them, all these sort of things and yet no one found the body. Perhaps they led the police to where they believed that they did this, but they couldn't find anything. Perhaps they found some blood, but it was very, very old blood, like could have been there for years kind of thing. And so they didn't arrest them because nothing seemed to have happened. And so instead this person was considered to be mentally unstable and perhaps the police thought that it was in fact a threat that this person would do this kind of thing, whether they had or hadn't done it previously. And that's why they've now ended up here. And they genuinely believe that they've done these terrible, terrible things. But there's also absolutely no evidence to show that they did do anything at all. And perhaps we never find out. Maybe it's up to the audience based on the evidence, you know, from the dialogue and what's said and what's shown in their memory and stuff. Maybe it's up to the audience to go whether they believe them or not, whether they think that they did kill this person and maybe the body just wasn't where they remembered putting it or something else happened or it's just all completely in their brain. So whatever way you want to think about that, let me know in the comments, I guess. And this character is explaining this maybe to more policemen, maybe police have come into the asylum again. Maybe this person hasn't been in the asylum for a long time, but they have been there for a while and they do get regular police visits because they're trying to solve this case potentially, but again, haven't arrested them because as far as everyone can see, there's nothing to arrest them for. So for this character, keeping the theme of the fire, this character is their own fire. They believe the fire is in them. They are the one who is burning and they are causing the whole world to catch on fire as well.
This next song comes halfway through the album, it's number 6 of 12, and therefore I think I'm gonna have the interval fall right after this song. Let's see how act one ends, shall we? Alright, this song is called Listening, and the lyrics go like this. Your skin, attach this fragile cliche of my broken heart attack. You should swallow your teeth and hang out and stay for a while. If your heart's still beating, it must be the blood. If your lungs are still working, it must be the mud. If it's still light out, then a kick in the ribs. Today's worth living. I don't see anything now, so just say what you want to say. And it's kind of funny how I'm not listening anyway. Lights out, I can't stand to hear you scream. While we were making love, I was fast asleep. And the night sky better give something up. I'm not listening. This character is singing it, I think, to a nurse. Why not? So this nurse character who maybe is trying to help them and maybe has had a sort of soft spot for this character, but also can't do very much because this insane asylum is probably a little bit evil. Let's face it. We're going with the trope. We're going with the cliche here. It's probably a little bit evil. And so they can't do very much, but they are trying. And this character who is, and this character who is singing, listening, has gone beyond the point of their breaking point. And they are now almost, it's not a breakup because they, they could be a couple, but it's, it's a rant, a tirade. Something is building up. Something is about to happen. Maybe they're about to get lobotomized. That could be a big ending to act one. Hey, come for the cheer, stay for the the bottom me and maybe they are sing screaming this at this nurse and all the way through in the background of other scenes we have seen this nurse trying to help this character but nothing they could do would help and they've made all these promises and they've tried to follow through but nothing would help and that has just made this character feel even worse like you're lying you've lied to me i i trusted you and i did all these things but nothing could help and obviously this nurse character maybe they really were trying to help i don't like the idea of them necessarily being a complete liar but that could be a twist too but either way the nurse has tried to do things the character is now facing the brunt of things and they are going to get lobotomized they're going to lose their whole sense of self and they are terrified and angry and this song is a huge rant and a big sort of screw you to this nurse character and it all ends with i'm not listening anyway i'm not listening anyway and what they mean partly is i'm done with you i'm no longer listening to your advice but also i'm not going to be listening because i'm not going to be me anymore so i won't be able to listen to you anyway because i'm done and i want this all to culminate with them actually getting this lobotomy so this song could start with them being pulled out of their room and they're resisting because they know they're about to get lobotomized and this nurse is trying to apologize and trying to run after them maybe trying to talk to the doctors and stop it but nothing is happening and this character is getting angry and angry and saying like you better swallow your teeth and you know when we were making love i was fast asleep it was a dream and this character being like no 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 no, no. it was true it was true it was true and then they get to this chair and they're strapped into this room and the glass that got shattered by the first character earlier has probably been patched up at this point and the lights come on and as they sort of focus maybe it's like a sort of almost like a laser pointer focusing on that part of the eye where the doctor's going to be doing this surgery and this other nurse is being kept out of the room and they're just sort of watching and as they're lying back for the last couple of lines all the lights sort of dim so you can see these sort of little lights flicker and it's part of the equipment but as the audience it sort of looks like stars up in the sky and so this character has a moment, and that's why they say the line, the night sky better give something up. And that's them sort of embracing it and going, there's nothing I can do now. I'm, I'm gone. I'm going to be gone. And then we have the final round of the chorus, which ends with the whole, I'm not listening anyway. I'm not listening anyway. It's kind of funny how I'm not listening anyway. And that can be sung predominantly to this nurse who's probably at the door and moving in. Maybe they have to help with this procedure and they don't want to and the big, you know, the big stabby stabby thing that's coming in. And so, hey dog, right at the very end, the last line in this song as sung on the album is screamed. It is but screaming, I'm not listening. And that can be the last thing that they say. So as this thing goes in, the I'm not listening. And then it stops. So they never get to actually finish the line and their song ends on a and either that will be the end of act one like right there the song will just cut it'll almost be like they finished halfway through a bar and the lights will go down and it'll be time for the interval get some ice cream folks come back for more or it will fade and they'll sort of sit up and this equipment will be taken away from them and they'll be completely calm and then maybe just to really hammer in the point and make it kind of awful. Oh, I love my brain sometimes. Maybe one of the other doctors could be holding up some things that this patient is like looking at. But as the music is fading, the audience don't hear it. You know, it's sort of like mumbled jargon that doesn't matter. But 
the audience hears the doctor sort of talking to this patient and they're not really responding. And then the last thing that the doctor can say to them is listening. And the patient sort of nods their head and they look up at this doctor. And that's the end of Act One. Go get some ice cream, folks. We're back for more cheerfulness in a moment. Welcome back. Welcome to Act Two of the terrifying, dark, entrenched, insane asylum musical. <laughs> All right, what's the next song? The first song out of the gate for Act Two. Well, it's called Yesterday's Feelings, and my God, is it a, a feeling song. Close my eyes and move to the back of my mind, where worries are washed out to sea. See the changes, people's faces blurred out, like sunspots or raindrops. Now all those feelings, those yesterday's feelings, will all be lost in time. But today, I've wasted away, for today is on my mind. Left the only worries I had in my hands, away from the light in my eyes. Holding tight and try not to hide how I feel, cause feelings mean nothing. Now I can't care to worry. I'm feeling so lonely, breaking apart all this love in my heart. Maybe this is a song from the nurse. That would be interesting. So we can start act two, where we finally find out whether this nurse was telling the truth or not. Because, you know, we're hearing it from this other character's point of view who feels like they've been tricked. But now, after they've been lobotomized and they're essentially gone now, that personality is completely gone, we then shift to this nurse, maybe the one nurse in the place who isn't, well, they're not all necessarily evil, you know, they might be sort of victims of the cog and machine kind of thing, but this nurse now is having a moment and maybe she'll end up becoming a patient at the asylum because it'll break her. But we hear her sing this song and she means it. And so perhaps she is bathing this character, maybe she's looking after them and they're just sort of wandering around and they don't really say anything and they don't really acknowledge her. And maybe when the main doctor who performed the procedure, you know, says listening or says something, they will sort of turn and do what this character says. And as far as the rest of the people are concerned, they are cured, they're healed because they are complacent now. And this nurse is broken by this and misses the person that they loved. So they start singing, close my eyes and move to the back of my mind where worries are washed out to sea. And this is, maybe it's their coping mechanism and it's how they deal with the place and how horrible it is because they know Maybe they didn't when they started, but they have come to know and understand that this place is wrong, but they're entrenched in it now and they can't get out and they're trying to help people and they are one of the few good ones who are genuinely trying to help. And if they leave, then these patients will be left with next to nobody who actually cares for them. And even though they're being complacent with all these horrible things, they can try to make the time these patients have a little nicer while they're here. And then the last line is about breaking apart all the love in her heart. And that could be her making her final decision. Perhaps she does leave or perhaps she does break and snap and ends up being a patient in the asylum as well. I'll let you guys decide her fate. What do you think should happen to this poor nurse? Although gender wise, this nurse doesn't have to be a female. I take that back. The only reason I'm saying female is because the artwork has a feminine presenting person, but it can be a nurse of any gender. I, I don't mind. Sorry. I'm saying her because I've, I've been looking at this the whole time, but they can be anybody, it doesn't matter. So what do you think should happen to this nurse? Are they gonna become a patient at the asylum so that they can be with this character? Are they gonna carry on working there so that they can be with the shell of this character? Or are they gonna decide this is enough, I'm done, I'm leaving and leave? Perhaps they go and whistleblow, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and I will attempt to make up my mind before we get to the ending. The next song is called Light With A Sharpened Edge and the lyrics go like this. Free from the torment of sin, all this I'm giving up. Much as the sun would decide to give in, explode into orange and hear all the voices sing praises with hymns. Mark the birth of change. Free from the torment of sin, all this I'm giving up. Over and over again, a light with a sharpened edge cuts through the black, empty space we call sky, beginning the cycle that stays, and I know in my head we all die, like the day and the night, like the sun in the sky. All this I'm giving up, 
Is there another side beyond the black and the white? A place I could meet you by? A place on the other side? I'll let you know when I go. I'll let you know when I go. When I'm gone, it's not me. Bruised wreckage. My soul is not me. So who am I now? So this song is going to be about some of the patients who have been in this hospital for a much longer time. I feel like it could be a sort of group number, maybe three of them, that kind of thing. Now they know each other quite well, this could be romantically or not, they could be very close friendship wise, I don't mind, it doesn't matter. The point is, one of them is about to be getting released. Now this is a huge deal, we're gonna have some scenes and some dialogue about this, we'll have seen maybe hints of this throughout the rest of the show, the doctors are not happy about this, they do not like people leaving because there is always that chance that no matter what they've done to walk this person's brain, this person could reveal some information or something. So they are doing their best to make this person look like a complete insane person, but their family has gone through lawyers and they've gone through courts and things, and finally this person is going to get to go and live on the outside world. And then this character is singing, it's not me, the person I'm gonna be on the outside, it's, it's not me, the person that I was before I was in here, it's not me, the person that my family and my friends on the outside are expecting to see, it's not me. But I'm going, I'm getting out. And they, between them, they start talking about this black empty place we call Sky, and to them that's, you know, the outside world. And they know in their heart that we all die, it's like the day and the night, and maybe in a way they're trying to be comforting to this character who's leaving, and like, if we die in here don't worry, everyone dies, just go out and live your life. But this character is also scared of dying out there in the real world, they don't know what the world is like, you know. And then it carries on, and it's this character saying, I'll let you know when I go, I'll let you know when I go. And between them again, the ones inside the asylum are sort of saying they won't necessarily be able to contact them, but if this person keeps in contact and maybe comes and visits them, they'll let you know, they'll let you know. Somehow we'll all know if each other pass, we'll know if our friends are dead. And this character is saying, I'll let you know when I go, like when it's time for me to leave, I'll let you know when I go, I'll let you know when I go. And then it does get to that final point and maybe we do watch them leave and we get them outside of this asylum, maybe again there's some cameras there taking pictures and there's this family. And then we come to their last line of the song where everything's muted around them and they're out in this blazing light and they are in the sun now, they are out in this fire that they were sort of scared of and they are still very wary. And the last line is, and who am I now? Who am I now? And we see this look on their face where they're just not sure but they're out and the sun maybe dims a little bit so that they are maybe more full of hope now that they're out and the family escorts them with their friends away and the music sort of fades out but then it cuts because we are still as an audience we are still trapped in the asylum with all these other characters and their stories are still ongoing it's not This next song is called Sound Effects and Over Dramatics, and it is a bit dramatic, so here are the lyrics. When the shirt came off, it was all in time. When a minute turned into a mile, and then I broke that grin and I cut it out, and you got all turned on by the taste of your sin. When I mentioned blue, all you thought was colour. When you mentioned drugs, all I thought was sober. When your pants came off and I turned you over, when you mentioned blue. Kill, smile, cut it out for me this time. Kill, smile, cut it out for me this time. Haven't seen him smile in a little while. This song, I think, might be a group number, and it might happen potentially in group therapy. So we get all of these characters together and they are each singing different bits. So you've got someone singing about, I get all turned on by the taste of your sin, and maybe that can be one of the pair that did the duet earlier. And you have lines like, when I turn you over, and you mention blue, and that could be from the innocent, the butterfly person, the younger one who didn't kill their sibling. And the line about, when you mention drugs, all I thought was sober, could be from the character from Let It Bleed, who are singing about the smoke and fill your lungs mama and all those lies that they believe that they're just this drug addled crazy person and so everybody even the characters who I haven't created yet who have songs later on in the show they can all have different lines and we can you know fit whichever fits to them best so all of their fires are coming out in this song and whether they're scared of it or embracing it or they their fire's gone out that kind of thing they are all singing this song and it ends in a big sort of 
chaotic, almost like a prison riot because they're also fired up from this therapy because the nurse has broken, this person they cared about has had the lobotomy, this other person's been able to leave and everything is just going haywire. And that's why it ends with this singing, kill, smile, cut it out for me this time. Haven't seen a smile in a little while. That can be maybe from the innocent person who's talking about, you know, the empty person who got the lobotomy. Haven't seen him smile in a little while. And that sets the nurse off and they're singing, kill, smile, kill, smile, that kind of thing. So big crazy group number that ends in craziness and then maybe they all get sedated at the end and put back to bed. So after that big crazy finish of a song where we have loads and loads of sort of screaming and shouting, everyone gets sedated and they're all taken back to their rooms and they're put to bed. And then we go to our next character. And this character sings the song, Hard To Say. The singer finished singing and she's walking out. The singer sheds a tear, fear of falling out. And it's hard to say how I feel today for years gone by. And I cried. It's hard to say that I was wrong. It's hard to say I miss you. Since you've been gone, it's not the same. My worries weigh the world how it used to be. And everything, I'm cold seems a plague in me. And it's hard to say how I feel today for years gone by and I cried. It's hard to say that I was wrong. It's hard to say that I miss you. Since you've been gone, it's not the same. It's hard to say I held my tongue. It's hard to say if only. Since you've been gone, it's not the same. Worse than the fear, it's the lie you told a thousand times before. Worse than the fear, it is the knife. And it's hard to say how I feel today for years gone by and I cried. It's hard to say that I was wrong. It's hard to say that I'd miss you. Since you've been gone, it's not the same. It's hard to say that I held my tongue. It's hard to say if only. Since you've been gone, it's not the same. This is another character who has been in this asylum for a while. Perhaps, actually, this is one of the friends that the person who got released was singing with and talking to. Yeah, so this is now one of them, and they were only singing a little bit, they were sort of joining in with that person's song, but it was mainly a solo, so now this person gets their moment. And since you've been gone, it's not the same. They are singing about the person who has left. Maybe some days and some weeks and some months have gone by, but again, time is so weird in this place that it doesn't really matter how long it has actually been. Things are not the same, and that is true regardless. We will have found out more about this character in the scenes in between where we got to know the different people a lot in the therapy session as well. And again, when we see into their brain and their mind, when we switch to their perspective and the sets and the different things and the projections reflect what they're thinking and feeling. So we already know a lot of the things that will have happened in their life. Maybe they lost their family, maybe they just don't speak to them anymore maybe they had a partner maybe they had some children but since they've been in this asylum they do visit but they've had to watch as their family make a new life without them perhaps their partner has now remarried found a new person and their children don't visit as much anymore and they regret everything they regret what they've done that's led them to be here they were wrong but it's hard to say that they were wrong and because they never did that and they never addressed that that's why they're here and the family has had to move on without them. And so this is a song full of both regret and remorse, but also just a tiny bit of inner peace. And maybe it's a song about snuffing out their own fire. Maybe finally they're just accepting that actually, yeah, they are going to die and they probably should, but they want to address all of these regrets and finally say all the things that it's so hard to say, even if it's just to nobody in the middle of the night while they're asleep. It's hard to say I have my tongue. It's hard to say for me. Since you've been gone, I'm not the same. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Since you've been gone, I'm not the same. Now I'm going to need you to bear with me because I've just had a terrible idea. So the next song is called The Lunacy Fringe and I have decided that this is going to be the Moulin Rouge Roxanne 
of this musical. It's gonna be the big crescendo -y number that people will remember when they leave. This is gonna be the one that is streamed on TikTok, it's gonna have the opt up in it and everything, and it's one character surrounded by dancers doing all their thing, it's gonna be warped and twisted and crazy, there's gonna be people on wires dancing up the walls, it is gonna be all trippy, all of the scenery is gonna be moving around, and it is going to be the big one. It's gonna have the dancing and everything, it's gonna be a whole number. Bear with me here. So this other character is going to be probably in a ward so that there is a reason for all these other people to be on the stage to begin with. And they are going to be part hallucinating, part dreaming, part shifting through reality. And the different dances and costumes that people are wearing are going to reflect all of that. So at different moments they'll be completely awake and in the real world, and at different points they'll be off in their dream and their fantasy and hallucinating. So there'll be a little bit of the visions that they see because of the drugs that they're on, there'll be a little bit of the just their brain fantasizing about things that they want and think, and there'll be other parts that are actually the real world as it's happening right now. And the lyrics to Lunacy Fringe go like this. Wake up my love, never thought you'd make me break me. Now I'm up from below, such a brilliant star you are. And will your love keep burning baby, burn a hole right through my eyes, and all the short times feel like no time, now I thought you ought to know. Do you know how long I've waited to look up from below just to find someone like you? And will your love light burn me baby, burn a hole right through my heart. I think I might just trust you maybe, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want to know. I think you could make me girl. You could make me and take my life. I know you could break me girl. Take all of me, all of me. I'm so far gone. I've been running on empty. I'm so far gone now. Do you want to take me on? This song actually is quite upbeat, hence all the crazy weird dancing going on. And this is going to come from this character, maybe having a conversation, maybe thinking about something, and it's to do with who would want me? Who would date me like this while I'm either in here, or maybe if I do get out like that other person who's just left, who would want me? And their fire is this imaginary fictional person that they're also pretty sure doesn't exist, and part of the upbeatness of this song is that they're playing it as almost for laughs in their own head. Maybe the people they are speaking to in real life are their friends and the other inmates, and they're talking about how this is insane. This person doesn't exist, this will never happen, but their fire is still this imaginary person, you know. You could take me, girl, you could make me, you could make my life, but you could break me, girl. You could take me, you could break my heart because you don't exist, but also because if they did meet someone, as soon as they find out all this stuff about them, about how they got to be here and what they've done in their life and how their brain has been and all these different things and that they've ended up in an asylum, this person would probably not want them anymore anyway. And as the song builds and we get to another chorus, people are dancing up the walls, the dreams are taking over, maybe the doctors are joining in, dancing and things as well, and it's all just going into a big ball of complete madness in this character's head brought on by the idea that no one could love me anyway. And we build up and build up and build up, and there is a moment in the song where they sing, do you wanna take me on? And that could be an opt up, a big sort of big moment where everything happens. And then from there it slowly fades and falls and drops. And eventually everyone who's dancing on the walls disappears and the scene sets to a sort of normal in the asylum. And the doctors who were dancing are now moving up and down the ward, the patients who were dancing are returning to their beds, and everything was just in his mind. And he is left dancing to this last bit of the song which is like do 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 and this character is then the only one left dancing and they're standing on their bed in their pajamas sort of going do 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 and they're dancing and they're just lost in this fantasy of yeah this is so stupid but what if what if someone loved me and they do the last line of do you want to take me on knowing that nobody would at least to them to them nobody would until they are brought down by the rest of the nurses and the story carries on And now we come to the last song of the show, which is called I'm a Fake, and the lyrics go like this. Look at me, you can tell by the way I move and do my hair, do you think that it's me or it's not me? I don't even care. I'm alive, I don't smell, I'm the cleanest I've ever been. I feel big, I feel tall, I feel dry. Just look at me now, I'm a fake. Do I drink? Do I date? I've got perfect placement, all my ink, satisfied in your eyes. I'm the biggest fan I've got right now. I made sure that I look how I wanted to look. The people around me, people surround me. I feel big, I feel tall, I feel dry. 
Just look at me, look at me now. I'm a fake. My stomach hurts now and all tied up in lace. I pray, I beg for anything to hit me in the face. And this sickness isn't me. I pray to fall from grace. The last thing I see is feeling and I'm telling you I'm a fake. I am in two minds about the ending of this show. Option one is everyone still in the asylum and they sing this song and it's almost joyful. And they're singing, I'm a fake, I'm a fake. Almost, I'm a fake insane person or I'm a fake sane person, whatever their version of that is. And they are almost setting the place on fire, maybe even literally. And they're singing and dancing because they just know they're never getting out. This is never going to happen. That one time that one person got out, that was a chance in a million and none of them are ever going to get out. And so they decide to set the place on fire and they're all going to die but they're fake anyway. And they're singing, I'm a fake, I'm not insane. Or I'm a fake, I'm not real enough to ever be out there. So we're gonna die a fake in here. And all these lines like, I'm the biggest fan I've got right now and I'm clean, I don't smell. And it's them saying, I, I'm i better, I should be better. I should have gone, but you're not letting me leave. You'll never let me leave. And the whole show ends with the asylum up in flames and all the doctors are dead and it's never gonna happen again. And people, you can see, maybe there's news articles again up on the screens and stuff. And you can see that everything that was bad has now been uncovered, but it only got uncovered because police came to the wreckage to find out what's been happening. And though everybody died, at least they know what happened and now they can stop it from happening for other places. And perhaps a lot of this was driven by the nurse character as well. Maybe the innocent character survived. Maybe Maybe they're the last one left or maybe not maybe not because no one believed them maybe not maybe they walk out and their ghost goes with them and they walk into the world that kind of thing i'll let you decide so that's what we will call option a with either everybody or mostly everybody deceased but vaguely happy about it option b is everybody lives however they're singing I'm a fake because the doctors have been pressured by society and lots of people in the tabloids outside there. They've released somebody. Why aren't you releasing other people? And people are starting to look into their records a bit more and they are under the microscope. Why are all these people still there? Surely you can help these people. So what they decide to do in a moment of desperation is lobotomize everybody and everybody gets lobotomized or maybe given some sort of drug. Something happens to every single patient so that upon release, they will say nothing about what has happened to them, but they can be released out into the world. And all these characters are released out and there's press and public and friends and family and maybe people who love them, people who hate them, maybe they're out on their own and they're all out there together and they're singing this, I'm a fake, I'm the cleanest I've ever been, I don't smell, I'm alive, I'm the biggest fan I've got right now, but I'm a fake because it's not really me. And they're trying to say all this stuff, but no one can hear them because they just, they have nothing. There's nothing there. Maybe it'd be even more powerful if the people on the stage only sing a bit of the song, but the rest of it is sung by a chorus of projected screen images and videos of them in character, or the actors in their characters singing, but only in projection. And the actors who are on the stage are blank and have nothing to say. They're out in the world, but they're not them anymore. They're a fake. And the ones who get embraced and taken in by their family and their friends, they're blank, they're blank slates, they're not there, they can't really appreciate their friends and family anymore, they're gone. The people who are on their own, they're left wandering fakes to go around the world and they have nothing. And the doctors get to start all over again as we see a new slew of patients come into the asylum. And the whole cycle begins again. <laughs> So what do you guys think? Ending A, where everyone mostly dies but they're happy about it? Or ending B, where everyone mostly lives but they're not so happy about it? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. That brings us to the end of this very cheerful video. And that brings us to the very end of this episode of Monday Madness. Thank you. Hey buddy. Yes, that's a stick. It's a very nice stick. Yes.
Thank you for sticking around to the very end of this video. If you would like to listen to this album, it is by a band called The Used, and it is called In Love and Death. The Used do have a lot of different songs, lots of albums, lots of music videos, but if you want to listen to this one specifically, I'll put a link to the playlist down in the comments below and in the description of this video as well. And that brings us to the end of the month of April, which brings us to the end of the month of Mischief. That means that we're going to have a new, brand new theme for May and I am still not decided. So if you have any ideas, chuck them down into the comments below. Ultimately, I will take the most popular ones and I'll throw it onto my Patreon so those people can vote for what they want. All right then, you wonderful lot. Have a fantastic week. Let me know what you're up to. Let me know what you think. Tell me what you think about all these characters, this story. Who do you think they might be? Let me know down in the comments below and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.